I am Raymond Galker, and this is Open House here at Community Media. Uh, thanks for watching this segment, and this segment is going to be awesome. We're going to have a lot of fun uh, in this segment. Uh, we have uh, uh, some special guests. Uh, Katie Hess is with us. She is the director of the PA Landscape Conservancy. I am the Director of Pennsylvania Landscape Conservation, Conservation for the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. Good. Thanks for letting me know that. <laughs> You're welcome. That's awesome. And, you know, um, here at this show, we invite people on from the community that are doing great things for our community. And we've had a lot of great nonprofit individuals come in and share the services they're private, providing for, for our residents uh, where uh, Katie, they take and they find w where people are in their life and help them uh, realize their potential. And th that is, is just an awesome concept. You know, um, you know, I'm still trying to find my potential Oh my and goodness. <laughs> to always be working towards betterment. And um, what you're providing with, with us today is um, the opportunity to talk about our landscape, uh, our uh, ecosystem. You know, we have a beautiful opportunity here where we have mountains, mm -hmm. and then we go to the valleys, uh, we have rolling hills. Um, and uh, what you're lucky you get to, to work with that every day. Yeah, I'm really, really lucky. And actually, uh, I never thought that I would be able to stick around in this region. I'm originally from here, and I never thought that I would find a job like this around here. And so um, this is what I've always wanted to do, and I'm really, really grateful that I get to be here, admire all of the things, and work for you know, them to continue in the beautiful way that they already exist and have. Well, you were meant to be here. <laughs> I mean, you're originally from Biglerville? I grew up in Biglerville. I um, had moved there in the 90s from Franklin County. So I'm from throughout the region. OK. So you're originally from Franklin County. I were am. you originally from the mountains of Franklin? Yeah, my family has been in Franklin County uh, along the Fort Loudoun, Blue Mountain, North Mountain, whatever you call it locally, since the 1730s. We were part of the Scotch-Irish um, who were moved here essentially to um, claim territory for later uh, European immigration. So as a, as a little girl, did you camp out? And oh my gosh, so much. My parents had us at state parks all of the time. We didn't have a lot of money, so state parks were like integral to the way that we grew up. You know, low camping fees, free admission, fresh air, uh, good family time. So I spent a lot of time doing that and traveling back and forth over the mountain to visit family. So. You are part of the South Mountain Partnership, mm -hmm. which is part of, which is a group. Tell us, tell us about the South Mountain Partnership. Absolutely. We consider ourselves to be something called a conservation network. And so conservation is pretty self-explanatory. We work in the conservation of agricultural, cultural, and historic uh, natural and outdoor recreation things and assets in our communities. And we consider ourselves to be a network because we are not a standalone organization and we don't necessarily want to be. Uh, we don't have the capacity to do that or the funding. And what we're really after is to drive, is to reflect the needs of our community members. So. Um, we work with 40 locals. They represent a variety of groups and types of people, and they really drive what we do and how we do it. So we're not cooking up ideas on our own with a top-down approach. We really have an internal organizational structure that drives our work from the bottom up based on what local values exist and 
you know, what they perceive the challenges and the needs to be. And I'm really proud of that. So the partnership is structured <laughs> and you have a role in that. I have a role, yes. Your role is the director? Yeah. Okay. And really what that means is that myself and the program manager are tasked with facilitating this conservation network. And we do that in a variety of ways. Um, we hold at least three regional meetings every year. They travel around the region. And so just Friday, we held our winter regional meeting in Gettysburg at Gettysburg College, thanks to um, Megan, who secured us the space there. And we had about over 80 people show up from the area, but also you know, other counties. And that's what we like to see. When we travel around, we're trying to get people from other parts of the region together in the same room, learning different things, being curious together, establishing networks. And then we also uh, run several grant programs we, we run a mini grant program that disperses, um, that regrants money from the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We have a privately, well, a publicly funded, a locally funded uh, flex grant program for small projects that might not be able to compete for those mini grant, uh, for those mini grant, uh, applications um, with DCNR, and then uh, we hold a research core and science summit program, and we disperse money for research projects for uh, local young people in college to work with a professor throughout the region, um, contributing to our knowledge about this place. Um, in addition, we do things like uh, our communications work. We obviously just launched this State of the Region project. So this is a new project that is really springboarding us into the future. This will be what we do over the next five to 10 years. And uh, you just had a gathering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you had 80, 80 organizations? Maybe not quite 80 organizations, but 80 people at 80 least, people. yeah. But if you look at the, the network that you have formed, mm -hmm. you have different organizations that belong to that network. Absolutely. And you have a considerable number of organizations. Yeah. And mainly their interest is the Blue Mountain area, coming down into Gettysburg, Conewaga, New Oxford. Mm -hmm. You do programs to conserve the beauty and the environment. Yeah, and a lot of what we do is to highlight and elevate the good work and the good ideas that already exist here so that other people in other parts of Adams County or in other parts of our region can get inspired by that and put those best practices into into practice. So for example, we had the Adams County Planning Office present about their cultural heritage plan that they're undergoing and wrapping up. And we had other county planners in the room, for instance, from Cumberland County. So now they get inspired or they get some, you know, they know to contact this other office for best practices when they want to explore that. So that's a heritage project? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you explain what that was? Yeah, it's a program, well, it's a type of planning that Adams County Planning Department is undertaking. Every county planning office um, has a comprehensive plan, and uh, the smart ones pay special attention also to their historic resources and their cultural resources. And so oftentimes in you know, Adams County, we might think of the battlefield and, and the Civil War, but there is so much more history <laughs> in this region. Yeah. And so what that does is try to acknowledge all of the different ways that history in general shows up in the landscape, try to understand it, and put forth recommendations for how best to preserve it but it doesn't create any teeth necessarily that homeowners have to do anything different. Right, yeah. it's just awareness that this is significant 
to the history of this area, mm -hmm. and the area gets to know it a little bit better. Yeah. It's all about getting to know this place even more than we already know, because there's always more to be revealed. That would make an interesting pro... We need to do something <laughs> with that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We can connect you with them. Because that's what I like is you're not only trying to preserve the natural resources of our area, which is tremendous. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Blue Ridge Mountains, you said that it starts in Bowling Springs. Yeah, and then run south all the way through all of those other states. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you know, our concern or our contact is mainly, uh, you know, Boiling Springs, uh, Gettysburg, South Mountain, Fairground. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're looking at the Shippensburg side. You're looking at the Gettysburg, the Franklin area, and then going down into Maryland. Uh, Ski Liberty. That's right. You know, um, Boiling Springs. I mean, the, the fishing opportunities there is and, amazing. Yeah. And that's why we're named South Mountain Partnership is because that mountain connects all of us. It's the backdrop to many of our car rides, our walks, our hikes. If we're not hiking on the mountain, we probably see it. Um, and historically, it's been the place that gives us the resources that we needed to evolve and gain wealth as a society. And so that's part of the reason that we're named after it and we consider that to be the heart of our region. And, and this, the history is tremendous. You have the Appalachian Trail. Mm -hmm. Have you ever hiked the Appalachian Trail? Portions. Portions? I'm not an overnight or through hiker at all. <laughs> what, what part did you do, Katie? So the, our program manager, Julia, and I have uh, started, our, our goal is to hike every inch of the Appalachian Trail in this region. Okay. So we're about maybe a quarter to half of the way finished. We okay. tried to do it on a Friday. We tried to make time to do that. <laughs> Sometimes that's a little difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. And beautiful, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not many people know how important the Appalachian Trail is. I certainly didn't. The only thing I was taught was to not pick up hitchhikers. That's mm -hmm. all I knew about the AT. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a national scenic trail. It's a unit of the national park system. And I think it's something we could be leveraging so much better for our local economy, um, recreation, connections, all of those things. And so a little bit of that is called out in the State of the Region report. Um, one of the needs is to increase access to outdoor recreation. And the Appalachian Trail could be like a trail that everyone could tap into. Did you ever go to the Hairy Hand? Yes. Only within the last couple of uh, years, though. Uh. And we took my daughter to see it oh, um, for the first time. Blast. She's quite young, but yeah. she liked to be around all the people. So you will go back oh, with your daughter? The hairy hand. Can you tell everybody what the hairy hand is? No. No. You have to experience it on your own. Okay, so. At Pine Grove Furnace Pine State Grove Park. Furnace. Fall Furnace Fest every October. You got to, you got to. If you it's have, a great community happening. Uh, Everyone gathers at dusk on the beach uh, to listen to the legend together and then experience what is to come together. And. The guy's name is McGaver. Yes, right. Okay, <laughs> and that's all we're going to tell you. Yeah. You know, you ha this is, a, and that, that's a neat thing about uh, your job and our community is um, th th these characteristics of 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 history that um, uh, just adds to the beauty and of, of life here. And there's so much more to be revealed. Um, Are we going to reveal it? Over time, okay. yeah. So one of, the, one of our implementation projects out of state of the region is to survey the region for historic resources. And we have, we have a plan for how to survey because uh, it needs to be rather structured. But we'll, we'll survey for things that might not typically have been valued in the past. And, and could, it, could it be things like here at New Oxford, you know, they have the Harvest Festival. 
Is it deeper than that, or is it as pure as a community event that people gather and, you know, actually create culture? Mm -hmm. So for our purposes, we're looking for places and structures that exist, um, but they could be significant because they were used for important community events like the, the one that you're talking about. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. But they could embody um, untold stories like the story of Ralph Abel. He was the first, um, he was part of the first class of foresters at the Mount Alto Forestry School, and he was the first black man to go through the forestry school. He stuck around for quite a few years and contributed a lot to um, the program and our understanding of actually like modern day composting. That was a big part of his innovation. But we lost him, and there's a lot of speculation as to why we lost him, why he went back to Philadelphia or, or to Philadelphia. And um, a lot of people speculate it was racism. A lot of people don't know. I would like to know more. Okay. But like, there are so many tendrils of history to uncover about our conservation history, our extractive mineral history. Um, we've got ancient metariolite quarries that were the best, uh, seemingly the best in the mid-Atlantic. Our stone was traded by First Nations folks, prehistoric folks, up and down the East Coast because it was just right for tool making. And we we're just scratching the surface of our history here. Is that like in the Caledonia area? It's in um, a show state forest, yeah, in the general Caledonia uh, State Park area, yeah. So the, the interesting thing, too, is when I, I look at what the South Mountain Partnership does is, you know, you promote agriculture, you know, uh, and um, cultural, the cultural element. Right, yeah, you, you huge. Know. So why we do that is... But why we talk about not just the act of farming, but also the culture of farming is because any farmer knows it's a way of life. It is, you have your own agricultural community around you. You live a very different life than the average person um, because that way of life just necessitates it. But it also, you know, living that way and doing the thing creates a unique identity, a unique look to the landscape, a unique architectural style of barns, storage sheds, even homes. And um, so, yes, we always talk about it in that way. And, and you're looking at recording uh, how this progressed from 17, what did oh. you say your parent, your... Uh, oh, relative? my folks uh, probably arrived in 1730s. We'll, we'll go, f you go further, much further back, back than, than that. that. Yeah, because... And you have been, or this is a goal? So we have, in a sense, in that uh, several years ago, we conducted a cultural landscape assessment for Michaud State Forest and the broader region. And that's uh, what helped us to really start to articulate the value of the metariolite quarries and... We have lots of archaeologists working in this region to locate and really understand the metariolite quarries. Um, so we will certainly be going as far back as we can. Also, like we owe it to those populations. You know, r history doesn't start with European immigration here. It started. Mm -hmm. it, it existed so much earlier, and so I'd personally love to get reconnected with the First Nations history prior to Europeans. That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't it? Because supposedly there was like great Indian battles, large ones fall here hmm. before the Civil War. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I mean, there's so much to learn, yeah. as I said, <laughs> yeah. And this is what the South Mountain Partnership is partly about. Yeah, it's, it's about trying to understand the nuances of, you know, where we've been, 
where are we now and where are we headed? And so if nothing else, we always want people to consider, you know, how am I doing today? Which is what the report card report really card. does is, you know, how is the landscape doing? How is my public health or how is our public health because of that, you know, air quality, water quality. Can my one-year-old play in a stream without getting sick? Well, in 50% of the creeks around here, there's a risk of that. They're impaired. Um, that doesn't always correlate with like getting ill from E. coli, but it's an indicator that we've got some course correcting to do. But the next thing we want people to uh, think about is where are we headed? When we make another decision, whether on our property, in our local government, or county government, or as a state, is it moving us closer to health and sustainability, like personal body health or community health? Or is it moving us, it's going to kind of take us further away from sustainability and health? And we just want to create that conversation about where are we headed? What can we influence? What do we do, want to do together? And so that's another thing that came out of State of the Region is we brought the four counties together for the first time through their planning departments to um, assess all of these metrics and figure out the top priorities moving forward. So we're going to be taking on a regional trail coalition, wildlife corridors, um, natural heritage inventory updates together because these uh, departments said that those are the things that they could find us being valuable contributors to. So we wanted to listen to them because it doesn't make any difference if you create something that's pretty and nice for you, it's got to serve people. Mm -hmm. It's got to serve the local community as well. And I, I guess there's, if you look at the local community, you have the county governments, the governments, the decision makers mm -hmm. that you interact with, and then you have the developers, and then you have us common people <laughs> that just love <clears throat> Adams County. Yeah. Um, and y again, y you consist of many different organizations yeah. that have the, the county's interest at hand. Yeah, communities and counties. And businesses. And businesses, absolutely. So when we got on your website, which I wanna urge people to get onto your website, mm -hmm. and your report card. Yes. Is, this isn't the report card for uh, the South Mount Mountain uh, Partnership. This is a report card for how this area is doing as far as health. Absolutely. Yes. So they can get this report card on the website? Yes, you can go to southmountainpartnership.org and on our homepage, you should be able to link directly to our state of the region project. And it's there that you can download the report card, you can access interactive mapping. We've mapped all of the measurements that show up in the report card. And there's also a final report with the final recommendations and the big projects that we're going to be taking over in the next uh, five to 10 years. So your, your long-term goals are here. Um, this is awesome. This is something that I know you're going to enjoy because this is, this is your home. Mm -hmm. And this affects everybody. And you're looking at, like, for example, nature, streams and creeks, 2,391 miles of waterways here. 48% are impaired. Mm -hmm. You know, so you could, the re report count, yeah, the report card counts, right? And this report card counts in what we as a community needs to know in order to improve our health and well-being. Yeah. And it's not only bad stuff. You know, there are quite a few things in here to celebrate. Like, we, we're preserving land, we're preserving farmland, we have a lot of recreational amenities. So there's definitely things in here to celebrate and keep doing. And so, you know, we want the same quality of life 
10, 20 years from now as what we have today, maybe even better. better. And yes. so this kind of helps us to understand what we need to do to ensure that. And the South Mountain Partnership, we have Kathy Hess, the director of PA Landscape. Katie. Con <laughs> Katie. Katie. Katie Hess, director of lands Landscape con service Conservation. Conservation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. With us here today, and she is... Um, I, I want to say fighting um, for um, the health of our environment and our culture, uh, uh, but you're enjoying the fight, uh, and it's not that much of a fight, is it? Uh, no, it's not a fight. It's about finding ways to work with people toward a shared positive outcome. Yeah, and not adversarial at all. At all. And the neat thing is the men, when you look at their website and you see all the different organizations that's part of your network, it's amazing. Thank you. It's amazing that all those people are working together um, for the, uh, the same goal, goals, trying to uh, gather the resources that are out there yeah. to make our life better. And we can always use more, whether you're an individual or a group. Um, any type of group is welcome to the table, come to our next meeting, uh, sign our partner letter, which is just saying, I'm gonna come to your meetings, I'm gonna read your newsletter, I'm gonna share the information. Uh, we're always welcoming new people, no matter you know what perspective you're coming from, and um, you can help guide our future if you're interested. And they can get a hold of you through the website? Yes, absolutely. There's contact information on the website for myself, our DCNR internal lead, Tyler Semder, and also our program manager, Julia Chain. So uh, is there any other organizations out there that are doing similar things that's not part of your network? Yeah, yeah. So this report card is actually modeled after a similar state of the environment report card in Berks County. They did that just for their own county. And so I pitched this idea to do the report card on the regional level to our leadership committee. And uh, we thought we could pull it off. So we tried and we did. Um, there will probably be other conservation landscapes throughout Pennsylvania that undertake something similar to this. I think that we may have started a trend. There you go. <laughs> um, and, uh, those other conservation landscapes are part of the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources program, like us, and there are eight total throughout the state. So if, if having clean water, clean air, air yeah. uh, the ability to go out and enjoy nature, see nature, um, you know, uh, participate in, in activities like fishing and, and, and that, um, you're the organization to uh, get involved with. Yes, and even if, even if you don't want to volunteer directly with our organization, coming to our regional meetings is a great way to connect with just similar-minded folks, or, or maybe not, but to tap into this network of partners and if you might find a better fit for yourself in one of the other organizations. They might be closer to the, your home or closer to your heart, and you could very well you know, link up with them and become part of their system as well. We don't have to, the spotlight doesn't have That'd to be, always be on us. Yeah. No. Um, how many regional meetings do you have? We have three each year. We have a spring meeting, we have a winter meeting, and we have something we call Power of the Partnership Celebration. And that is held during harvest season. Uh, we try to make it an outdoor event, and that's a celebration. The spring and the winter meetings are more educational. Um, they might have a PowerPoint presentation and an, a breakout activity. So you already had your winter meeting. Yeah. And the spring will be held the spring one will be held in April. In April. <clears throat> uh, that should be posted on our website as well, southmountainpartnership.org. And we also host a uh, research and science summit every other year. And so we're hosting that summit 
and our spring meeting at the same time. So again, that will be in April and take place at Shippensburg University. Katie, thanks for making this a great place <laughs> to live. Oh, thank you as well. And Community Media is looking forward to helping the um, South Mountain Partnership in the future. Um, this is great. We're really excited to have you be able to share your message uh, with the community. Thank you. Um, it's a great opportunity for us. And, you know, we have a great community here. And what makes our, great, our community great is people being connected. And um, if, if you go home and you, you don't know your neighbors, you're not making the community a better place to live. So get to know your neighbors, get to know organizations yeah. like the partnership, uh, South Mountain Partnership. And um, I like what you said. I'm going to try to remember it. Um, you know, you can get connected with organizations that are close to your home and close to your heart. Yeah. I like that. You know? <laughs> so try to find something in the community that's close to your heart and close to your home. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for being on this show. Thank you Katie so much Hatch. for the uh, invitation. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for watching this segment. And I hope that you're inspired to get on the website, uh, find out more about the South Mountain Partnership and see how you can connect with the community through this partnership. Thanks for watching, and until the next time, uh, be kind. <laughs>